Welcome back guys, Dom here. This is one for the dads out there, the ones that are over 40 and are thinking about getting back into the health and fitness thing. One concern that pops up periodically, not all the time, but is I don't want to hurt myself. Like I tried X years ago to get back into it and then I screwed my back, stuffed my back, whatever. You get up the sand, the sand. It's something like they're concerned about injury. Well, there are probably a couple of things that we can do. They are, they're not going to call them baby steps, but they're, they're the simple things that we can do before we get started. So let's just have a chat. So first of all, there's a phrase, assess, don't guess. In other words, when you're going into the gym and you're finally getting in and you're going to go and lift the weight, don't just go, well, I used to do this and whack that on. It ain't going to happen. Start with the empty barbell. Maybe you're going to start with even a lighter pair of dumbbells. But basically, do the assessment. Work out where you are today. Not where you used to be, but where you are today. And then hopefully, then you won't F yourself up. Number two, warm up and cool down. There is a camp out there at the moment about warm ups are for pussies and cooling down you don't do. Well, from me to you, occasionally I will do a full warm up that might take me 15, 20 minutes because I know that the workout that I'm going to do is going to tax me. It's going to tax me my muscular strength, my strength endurance, and it's even going to tax the central nervous system. So the ticker and the brain and all this sort of stuff up. So spend the time warming up. You might grab a broomstick, a dowel. You might just simply pull above the head. You might bend and twist. You might touch your toes. You might do a walkout. You might do some barbell curls in the barbell presses. And it's a light weight, but still go through the warm up. But you don't have to spend an hour doing the warm up like some people would think you need to believe for a 10 minute workout. Number three, gradual progress. We talk about progressive overload, bit by bit by bit, getting heavier, slightly adaptation, changing the reps, changing the rest, pause, time, etc. Now the whole idea here is let your body give you the feedback, step by step. You're not gonna come in today and go, I can bench 100 and my, I wanna go after 140 and you whack the 140 on next week. It ain't gonna happen. Slowly progress. Keep that 100 for a while, change the reps, change the sequence, change the pause, and then when you feel that you're getting stronger, then add a half a pound, a pound, a kilo, whatever it is, but gradual progress. We talked about form and function in an earlier video, and therefore that is the thing. Like, I mean, if you can't squat ass to grass, then realistically, why are you even trying to do it? Because there are the form Nazis out there that are telling you don't do that. They're the other ones that are also telling you like, why are you going beyond there? Because it does no point going past 90 degrees. There's also a thing what we call full range of motion, the body's ability to take the full range. So I can extend my arm out fully and I can bend my arm all the way back in. Likewise too, I should be able to, in theory, squat full ass to grass. Now, I can't do it with my feet in the train tracks, it's the way my hips are. I can't do that, so therefore I am a more of a sumo biased, biased squatter, but I'm not all the way out like a duck feet. So therefore, my form, my technique is something that works for me. You need to spend the time and working what that is for you too. Reading from the notes, always pays to help them, even though I can't read them half blind. Stability, agility, and strength. There is a variation of this out there, but people call it functional working out, people call it this, but focus on those. So focus on stable, focusing on your rib cage, focusing on tightening up through the shoulders so that the upper back and mid back comes in so that the lower back doesn't just take the full load when I'm doing my first kettlebell swing or good morning or deadlift. Likewise too, focus on my range of motion through here. So I might do some band work on my triceps before I then go and grab a easy curl bar or something and do skull crushes. Focus on the form, the technique, get the range, and then work from there to what you are currently capable of. From there, you can then get your ambitions in line. Agility, moving around. For us older guys, we still wanna be able to move, push, pull, bend, squat, twist, lunge, gait, get away, get a jiggle, chase the grandkids for those of you who have got them. In my case, it's the two dogs. So therefore agility is part and parcel of my training. I'm not bouncing around like an energizer bunny, I'm just gonna incorporate that. For me, it's going from what we call bilateral or 
two feet in that case, two, two sides, two unilateral or one side. I'm not, I might do single arm suitcase carries, farmer carries to simply build up one side over the other and that's gonna help me. And final thing, if you are unsure, go find a good quality PT strength case for someone who's actually gonna do a good movement assessment on you. Somewhere where you may have to invest a little bit of money, but go and do it. Might be your physio, might be your chiro, might be, again, a PT, but someone who knows their shit and will simply say to you, okay, this is where you are. This, this is your box for now. Let's work within the confines of that box and let's slowly start to push the box out a bit wider. Not everyone does conventional deadlift. People like sumo. Not everyone squats ass to grass with their feet in front. They can't do that. Length of femur, length of tibia, length of hips, opening, whatever. Not everyone can raise their hands straight up above their head. Some look like they're in a pantomime and they're the tree on the stage. Not everyone can do the scratch test behind your back. One arm for me is much better than the other. Tight rotation, a bit rounded, but I deal with it. I know what my limitations are. I've had my assessment done. Can I work on them? Yes, I can. But the added benefit of that versus what I'm currently able to capable to do, then that's cool. I know I can't front squat a shit ton of weight, so therefore I'll use lifting straps to allow my hands to go past my head to keep the elbows driven up and forward. And I'll also, when I'm doing that, I will use a wedge on my heels and I will squat to a box. There is no real purpose in me jacking it up, looking like I'm flipping something out of Michael Jackson's thriller movie and squatting and then stuffing up my back, my knees, my hips and whatever, or fucking up my elbows. That's it. Starting off, restarting, whatever it is, dads. Take the steps. Little by little, you will get there. Some of us have been there and are coming back down. Some of us have been there back down and on the way back up. But at the end of the day, it all does do one thing. It works for you. And you are not me, nor am I you, nor are you the neighbors, brothers, sisters, brothers, cat. It is about you, your form, your function, your warm up, your workout, what you do. Doesn't make a difference what others say they need to do, but you do you. That's it. You can overcome injury. You can avoid injury. Sometimes injury, shit just happens. But do your best, be progressive, and I will see you in slinging around some steel.